In the Intelligent Organization Conference, March 1990, in Monterrey, Mexico, Stavor Beer began by comparing the reductionist scientific paradigm and the cybernetic paradigm. Regrettably, the video of this conference is lost. Fortunately, I preserved an audio to make the transcript. Now you can hear Stafford's voice while I try to reproduce some of the images he drew on the blackboard. So here is Stafford Beer. Well, he hello everybody. We, uh, we are living at a moment, as you I'm sure would agree, with quite an incredible change in the world. So, I was saying that uh, I'm talking about mathematical catastrophe, very sudden step functions in the way that society is behaving. Obviously, the, the very uh, distant Eastern Europe is very much in our minds, but it's happening everywhere. I lived to see this morning something I thought would never happen. Uh, Mr. Pinochet removing his sash in Chile. Yes. and. Um, and as we, as we look at this huge field of change, we have to ask ourselves how we are going to adapt to it. Now, it's being said, and it worries me very, very much, that capitalism has defeated Marxism. And people are not observing that capitalism is going very fast into decline as well. We are running on massive deficits, very high levels of unemployment, of inflation, of poverty in the so-called rich world. And it, it worries me that the so-called developing countries may just assume that what they have to do is continue to follow the pattern which I believe is already looking very disastrous in uh, Europe and the United States. Now I may be wrong about that, but I don't think I am. <clears throat> if you add to that, that emerging countries in the, in the Eastern Bloc, people regaining independence, again, we've seen Lithuania only, only yesterday, uh, if they consider that what they have to do is to copy uh, the, the uh, lines laid down by uh, the United States and Britain and so on, then the world is going to be in the most appalling turmoil. So if, uh, this is my basic belief. You mightn't quite agree with that, but you would have to agree that there is a massive amount of change going on, and I think you would have to agree that maybe we're not too sure how to handle it. That's the minimal statement. Well, it seems to me that if we are going to find a way into thinking about this under the title of intelligent organization, we have to begin by trying to understand how we got to the position we're in. Let's examine, I'll have to do this briefly, we only have the morning, but I would like to begin by examining how we got to be, <coughs> excuse me, it's very early for me. <coughs> how we got to be in what I would call I don't want to pull the machinery apart. I'll pull this over here. We are, I claim, in a reductionist world. Now, you all know what the word means, but I am anxious to explain why I think it's very important to penetrate it. Let us begin with the structure of knowledge itself. You go back to Aristotle, and you find him saying, that you can divide something between A and not A. And that is Aristotle's principle of non-contradiction, which says you can't be A and not A at the same time. So we began with that. And if you look at A, then you say, well, A divides into X and non-X, and, and so on. And I'm not going to fill the blackboard. It's, it's a, like a family tree. And that's what a reductionist approach means. And that got applied to knowledge. Now, the thing that we observe here is that very large distinctions were made quite early on in knowledge. 
and they have remained with us ever since and they've been very hard to dislodge. So to, to, to make it short, we have for instance physics, chemistry and biology and these became known as disciplines, did they not? A strong word. And people in physics didn't know what chemists were doing and still less what biologists were doing for hundreds of years, hundreds of years. Now we have to ask the question, does God know the difference between physics and biology? So we have started taking apart the cosmos, which is what I'm trying to say, the cosmos as a whole, reductionist style. And then we end up with universities, with departments, after you've gone right down here, many of whom cannot even speak to each other. And you know that is true. You try and get a social sciences, a scientist speaking to a physicist, it's going to be very hard work. Now, along with knowledge, we get the process of reason. How do you reason? Well, this develops again from Aristotle with the syllogism. Because if you have a major premise, the, the classic one is all men are mortal, and a minor premise, Socrates is a man, you can deduce. So it said that Socrates is mortal. So the syllogism becomes the basis of reasoning. And, you know, I'm trying to get you to look at this in a historical perspective, not because I'm an historian or, or it's interesting, but because I want to, to demonstrate how, how thousands of years, and certainly hundreds of years, have made us look at the world in the way we do, and therefore organize things in the way we do. From the syllogism, this premise, that premise, leads to the conclusion. You get the, the sorites, which is the whole chain of how you develop that. And let us remember that uh, the uh, medieval development of science and theology and everything was based on sorites. It was based on, the, on medieval disputation, is the phrase in English. I don't know if you use the same term where uh, you, you argue in precisely those terms. You say, you said that, well now I wish to distinguish, was always the word, in what you said between this and this. And then somebody else says, well, all right, but I wish to distinguish between this and this, and off you go again. So then, in the same way, if you start from this kind of basis, you start again with the very important next subject, historically, of theology. So what do we say now? We say, well, there's God, mystery. How do we break that down? Well, now, as you know from, from religion, there are all manner of ways of, um, uh, of, from theology, all manner of ways of breaking this down. Again, you tend to get this pattern developing. It got very entrenched in early Christian times, largely, I think, due to St. Paul. And so you come, working upwards, you have people down here, and you build up, and you get, I'm quoting St. Paul, angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, powers, all these ranks going up before you get to God. So there's your theology.